Yesterday was our first lesson in Al Qawaid Al Hisan Fi Asma Wa Sifat Al Rahman. The beautiful rules and regulations and the names and the characteristics and descriptions of Ar Rahman. Yesterday we covered some issues and the importance of knowing the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his descriptions. And from amongst these benefits, which we mentioned, is that it aids in that the dua be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who proceed their dua by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his beautiful names and his lofty descriptions and this is from the adab of the dua that we find the prophets and the messengers alayhim as salatu was salam using as well as the malaika. Now, we want to review a little bit of what we took yesterday. We took from the hadith of Fadali ibn Ubaid and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he heard a man يدعو في صلاته He had a man making dua in his salah وَلَمْ يُمَجِّدِ اللَّهُ وَلَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ فَقَالَ عَجِلَ هَذَا He heard a man making dua in his salah and then he, he didn't praise Allah nor did he give the salams to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم So what did the Prophet say about this man? Who's going to answer? What did the Prophet say about this man? And the Kia Ahmed. Yeah, Khana Hamza. What did the Prophet say about this man? He heard him making dua and he didn't praise Allah, nor did he give the salams Allah the Prophet. What did. Mm -mm. Naam, ya. Now that this man rushed. He rushed. Ajila had He rushed. He rushed into requesting his needs without praising Allah beforehand. And in this we also understand that sending salams upon the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam is a reason for you having your dua answered. Today we want to go over one of these hadiths because it's easy and it's easy for you all to memorize. This hadith that we took yesterday, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard a man in his salah saying, Allahumma inni as'aluk, O oh Allah, I ask you, anna lakal hamd, that all the praises for you, la ilaha illa ant, nothing is worthy of worship but you, wahdak, you alone, la sharik, la sharik alak, there's no partners for you, al manan the manan is somebody who gives a minna, somebody who gives a ni'mah. But like an, in it is exaggeration, one who gives a lot of ni'mah. That's Allah al-mannan. So when you're asking him for something, you want to praise him for that which is suitable. Naam al-mannan. Badi'u samawati wal the creator, the originator of the heavens and the earth. Dhul jalali wal ikram, the possessor of honor and generosity. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he's heard this man calling Allah like this, he said, he has called Allah by his greatest of names, that which if he is asked by these names, he gives. And if he calls by these names, he answers. This man from, an own, from his own self, the Sahabi, he gathered up these names and descriptions from his own self. Yeah. From his own self. Contemplate about the greatness of Allah. Another person, and this is the one that we want to memorize today, 
the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard a man saying, Allahumma inni as'aluk, O oh Allah, I ask you, anna laka, anna ka anta Allah, I ask you that you are Allah, al-ahad as-samad, ladhi lam yulid, wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufu wa al-ahad. All of this is extracted from where? Qulhuullahu ahad. This is somebody who contemplates about the Quran. So he used the surah that he read that we read often, and he extracted from it the names of Allah. Allah al Ahad al Samad. And he extracted from it descriptions of Allah. Lam Yadid, wa lam yulad, wa lam yakullahu kufu wan ahad. Three names and three descriptions. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard him say this, he said that he called Allah by the greatest of names, that which if he's asked by these names, he gives what he's asked for. And that if he's called by these names, he answers the call. This Sahabi on his own contemplated about this surah on this chapter and extracted these names and called Allah by it and extracted these descriptions and called Allah by it. And with that, Allah said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, his dua is answered. So it's upon us, according to our need, to call on Allah. Nah. That which is suitable. Nah. So in this dua, it says, Allahumma inni as'aluka, I ask you, Anta, we know this word anta. We know this word anta. Anta Allah al Ahad al Samad. Say, Ya Allah. Anta Allah, that's his name. And he is al Ilah. He's the one worthy of worship. Al Ma'bud. Oh Allah. Ya Allah. Allahumma. That meme. Allahumma. That meme. It takes the place of the ya when you call it ya allah allahumma means ya allah that's what allahumma means therefore you cannot say ya allahumma no the meme is in the place of ya so you either say ya allah or you say allahumma ya, Muha ya musa you understand that sometimes you say ya allah ya rahman ya rabbi and sometimes you say Allahumma. And this is al ism al a'zam. Even though there's ikhtilaf, even though there's difference in the issue, this is the most beautiful name of Allah. And the names of Allah, tatafawit. The names of Allah vary in goodness. The greatest of them is lafal jalala, Allah. So when you are making dua, you say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. And sometimes you say, Allahumma, Allahumma, Allahumma. Anta Allah al-Ahad as-Samad. Al-Ahad is the one. As-Samad is the one that is not in need of anything and everything is in need of him. That's Allah. Nah. Allahumma, Anta al-Ahad Anta Allah al Ahl al Samad al Ladi he who lam yalid wa lam yulad lam yalid he wasn't born. Afwan lam yalid meaning he doesn't have children. Lam yalid doesn't have children. Wa lam yulad he wasn't born. Wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan kufuwan is something equal. Lam yakun lahu kufu wan ahad. There's nothing equal to him. Taib, who memorized it? Indik ya Ahmed. You memorized it? Ikra, say it. No, we want to dua, not the surah. Allahumma anta Allah al ahad as samad. Al-Ladhi, he who lam yadid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad. Allahumma anta Allah al-Ahad as-Samad. Ya Allah, anta, we know this word anta. Anta Allah al-Ahad as-Samad. Al-Ladhi, he who lam yadid. 
walam yulad walam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad so this shows the importance of knowing Allah by his names and his characteristics from that which we took yesterday is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud in it is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said la shay there is nothing ahabbu ilayhi al madh that praise is more beloved to it than Allah there's nothing there's nothing that being praised that praise is more beloved to this thing than Allah Allah loves this more than anybody else there's nothing la shay la shay ahabbu ilayhi al madh that being praised, that praise is more beloved to it than Allah. Allah loves to be praised. Then the Prophet said, وَلِذَلِكَ مَدَحَ nafsa." Therefore, he praised his self. Praised his self. Allah says, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي نَزَّلَ الْفُرْقَانِ And he ta'al them. He is great, the one that sent down the Quran. He praised himself. He says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the world. So Allah praises His own self. Alhamdulillah, alladhi lahu mulku samawati wal ard. All the praise is due to Allah. He who belongs to Him belongs everything that's in the heavens and the earth. Now, we wanted today before we get into some of the, we'll begin. This this class here has to do with the. The qawa'id, the rules and regulations regarding the names of Allah and regarding the descriptions of Allah. Before we get into that, we want to mention additional ahadith, that which comes from the Sunnah of Abi Dawood, min hadith Rifa'a ibn Rafi' al Zuraqi. Qala kunna yawman nusalli wa ra'a Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, one day we were praying behind the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَلَمَّا رَفَعَ رَأْسَهُ مِنَ الرُّكُوعِ When he raised his head from ruku' from bowing, قَالَ سَمِيَ اللَّهُ لِمَنْ حَمِدَهُ He said, سَمِيَ اللَّهُ لِمَنْ حَمِدَهُ Allah answers the one who praises him. This word here, سَمِعَ سَمِعَ means to hear. Uh -huh. But Samia la yata'adda bihafjar, ya Suleiman. You say, Ana samia'tuka, I heard you. So when this verb here, Allah doesn't, this, in the Salah, we don't say, Samia Allah man hamida. We say, Samia Allah li man hamida. So when it has this li, it doesn't just mean that it hears, but that he answers. Because this word semi'ah doesn't need half jar. You say, Ana semi'tuka, I heard you. You don't have to say, semi'tu laka. It doesn't need this lamb. Ya Isa, are you with me? It doesn't need this lamb. So when it has this lamb, liman, this conveys that hearing here means answer. Allah answers the one who praises him. This is our lesson here. Allah answers the dua of the one who praises him. So you have to praise Allah when you're making dua. Nah. Sami Allah liman hamida. Faqala rajulun wa ra'a Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So a man behind the messenger of Allah in the salah, he said, Allahumma rabbana lakal hamd. Like we normally say. Then he increased. He said, Allahumma Rabbana lakal hamd, hamdan kathiran, tayyiban, mubarakan fi. He added this to it. Rabbana lakal hamd. Oh Allah, to you is the praise. Allah answered the dua of those who praise him. Rabbana lakal hamd, we're going to praise him. For you is all the praise. Rabbana laka al hamd, all the praises for you. Hamdan kathiran, a lot of praise. 
hamdan kathiran tayyiban good praise mubarakan fihi in that praise is baraka when he described the praise hamdan kathiran a lot of praise tayyiban good praise mubarakan in its blessed and in its divine goodness and praise falamman sarafa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala man al-mutakallam So when the Prophet made his salams and he left us, came out of the salah, he said, who was the one that spoke these words in the salah? Faqala rajulun ana ya Rasulullah Somebody said, I, I did all messenger of Allah Faqala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laqad ra'aytu bid'atan wa thalatheen malakan I saw some thirty odd angels, the malaika يَبْتَدِرُونَ أَيُّهُمْ يَكْتُبُهَا أَوَّلَ Rushing to see which of them is going to write this first. Nah. Because in it is what? Praise for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On a higher level. حَمْدٍ كَثِيرًا Nah. From the importance of knowing the names of Allah, and it's what we want to take today, is that which Ibn Qayyim mentioned in his book فَالْعِلْمْ بِهِ أَصْلُ كُلُّ عِلْمْ كُلِّ عِلْمْ Knowledge of Allah is the asas and the foundation of all knowledge until he says until he said, Rahimahullah. Faman araf Allah, araf ma siwa, wa man jahil Allah, fa huwa li ma siwa hu ajhal, thumma qara'a qawluhu ta'ala, wa la takunu kalladina nasu Allah, fa ansahum anfusahum, ulaika humul fasiku. Ibn Qayyim, Rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Man araf Allah, whoever knows Allah. Araf man si, ma siwa. He knows other than Allah. He knows everything other than Allah. If you know Allah, then you know what's halal, what is haram, what he likes, and what he dislikes, and what leads to him, and what moves far away from him. If you know Allah, and what his descriptions are, and that what he likes, and that what he dislikes, you know the value of salah. You know the value of shirk. You know its position of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know the value, the value of dressing in the hijab and imitating the sahaba. You know the value and the position of imitating the disbelievers. Man araf Allah, araf ma siwa. Whoever knows Allah, he knows the other than him. Wa man jahil Allah. Who's ever ignorant of Allah? For who walima siwahu ajhal. Then he is regarding other than Allah more ignorant. If he's ignorant of Allah, then the, of the worldly affairs and affairs in the half after he's more ignorant of it. If he doesn't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he recited the statement of Allah. Fala takunu wala takunu kalladina nasullah. And don't be like those who forgot Allah, but unsahum anfusakum. So he made them forget their own selves. Look how many people don't know Allah? That they harm themselves as if they hate their own selves and they harm their kids as if they hate their own kids. The jahal of what? Of the deen of Allah. And the jahal, the ignorant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَصُوا اللَّهِ Don't be like those who forgot Allah. فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ He made them forget their own selves. And that which is beneficial for their own selves. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ These are the sinners. These are the ones who have gone overboard. And have gone outside the realms of obedience to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So knowing the names of Allah and his descriptions, you're going to know your position in this world. 
and you're going to know what's good and what's not good and what is worthy of embarking upon and what's worthy of leaving until the ulama they say nobody falls into sin except that he's ignorant that he forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he forgot the hellfire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam wa in la tasrif anni kaydahunna asbu ilayhinna wa akun min al jahileen when the woman were trying to seduce him Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam says wa in la tasrif anni kaydahunna if you don't turn their plot away from me asbu ilayhinna i'm going to lean and incline towards them towards them this woman I'm going to be from among the ignorant. This is Yusuf. He's a prophet. Nobody falls into sin except he forgot the hellfire at that time. And forgot the other man, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody falls into sin. I'm said he falls into ignorance and forgetfulness. Forgot the blazing fire. He forgot the word of Allah for those who are firm upon his religion. Now, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he explains in a couple of verses that when you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know that which is expected of you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, when he sent Musa alayhi salatu wa salam to his people, he says, وَأَنَخْتَرْتُكَ فَاسْتَمِعْ لِمَا يُوهَا And I have chosen you, meaning to be a prophet. فَاسْتَمِعْ لِمَا يُوهَا Listen to that which is being revealed. إِنَّنِي أَنَ اللَّهِ Verily, I am Allah. Arrafahu bismi. He made him familiar with his name. Fastami' lima yuha. Listen to that which has been revealed. Innani an Allah. Verily, I am Allah. La ilaha illa ana. Arrafahu bi wasfi. Then he let him know his description. There's nothing worthy of worship except me. Fa'budni. Therefore, worship me based on this name and based on this description. Therefore, worship me. For whoever knows Allah and his descriptions knows his position and that which is upon him to embark upon. Now, so this is also the importance of knowing Allah. Man araf Allah, araf ma siwa. Whoever knows Allah, he knows other than Allah. Woman jahil Allah. And who is ever ignorant of Allah? For who alima siwahu ajhal. Then he is regarding other than Allah more ignorant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fa'lam. Annahu la ilaha illallah. Allah commands. Know that nothing is worthy of worship other than Allah. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ And seek forgiveness for your sins. Nah. So knowing, you knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alone and he alone deserves to be worshipped this reminds you that you have to seek forgiveness for your sins for your disobedience to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in Surah Al-Mudathir. Huwa ahlu taqwa wa ahlu al-maghfirah. Huwa ahlu taqwa. He is deserving that we have the taqwa for him. And that we have this fear for him. And that we have this reverence for him. Huwa ahlu taqwa. He deserves taqwa. Wa huwa ahlu al-maghfirah. He deserves to forgive those who have the taqwa for him. He is worthy of taqwa and he is worthy of forgiving those who have the taqwa for him. So if you know your Lord and who are ahlul taqwa, he's the one who deserves this taqwa and this reverence and this piety that we have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's also ahlul maghfirah. He is worthy of forgiving those who have the taqwa for him. So it's upon us to have this taqwa for Allah. And taqwa means fa'l al-ma'mur wa tark al-mahdhur, doing what you're commanded and staying away from that which you have been prohibited from 
This ability inside of you is called taqwa. And Allah is ahlul taqwa. He deserves that you have this for him. And if you have this for him, you are ahlul maghfira. He's also ahlul maghfira. That he is also one who forgives those who have this for him. Nah. So the best thing you can do after you fall into sin is make tawbah. Tawbah is nothing but a sign of taqwa. Tawbah is a sign that you fear Allah. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala, anadim tawbah. That regret is tawbah. Just that, this feeling that you have inside. Anadim tawbah. Regret is tawbah. Regret is repentance. It's the first step of repentance. How many people fall into sin and don't give anything about it? They don't care anything about it. The fact, the fact that you have this light still inside your chest called regret has a nitma from Allah. So the best thing you could do is repent before that light goes out. And you say, everybody does that, right? Everybody do that. No. The best thing you can do when you fall into sin Nah, -uh. and we fall into sin all the time. It's to repent and repent and repent and repent to the point that you're a repenter. That's something you do every day. You're not waiting for something. Ya Abdullah. This is your habit. That's that's you. Anta Taib. You're the repenter. Because you know the mercy of Allah. And you know your weakness. So you're not going to wait to fall into sin to start seeking forgiveness. That which passes enough. That's your shat. That's your habit. That's your habit. Now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and all these eyes show the importance of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, about his prophet. Inna waliyya Allah, alladhi nazzala al-kitab, wa huwa yatawalla al-saliheen. Inna waliyya, my guardian, is Allah, the one who sent down the book. The fact that Allah sent down this Quran, what is in the book of Allah? Except that Allah aids the believers, and he promised them Jannah, and he comes to their aid. Inna waliyya, my guardian, is Allah. Who is he? Alladhi nazzala al-kitab, the one that sent down the book. Well, he comes to the aid of the righteous. Uh, that's my Lord. In the wali, my, my, my guardian, Allah. How did, this, uh, how did he describe him? The one that sent down this book, his situation is awim. He's going to protect the believers. The one that sent down this book, he's going to protect the believers. Now. This conference will now be recorded. <clears throat> so this verse and various, various verses like it explain that whoever knows Allah by his names and descriptions Knows other than Allah. Nah. -uh. And it's firm. Nah. -uh. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent Musa and Harun to Fir'aun. I said, We fear, we're afraid. An yafruta alayna or an yataqa. We're afraid that Fir'aun will punish us before we even give da'wah. You know he would trans transgress. Allah said, Don't be afraid. I hear and I see. This is a reason for the believer not to be afraid. I'm with you all. I hear and I see. This is a reason for you to be firm. The fact that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you, with his knowledge and his protection and his mercy, and that he hears and that he sees. 
إِنَّنَا نَخَافْ We are afraid to go to Fir'aun. قَالَ لَا تَخَافَا Musa and Harun, don't be afraid. إِنَّنِي مَعَكُمَا I'm with you. أَسْمَعُ وَأَرَى So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact that he's with his believers, with his knowledge and his mercy and his protection, is from the descriptions of Allah. أَسْمَعُ وَأَرَى I hear and I see. It's from the descriptions of Allah. There's a reason for you to be firm in your religion. Nah. So it's incumbent, then incumbent, ever incumbent, that somebody knows Allah. Man araf Allah, araf ma'siwa. Whoever knows Allah, then he knows other than Allah. Nah. In closing, in, in the beginning of Surah Al-Ghafir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the malaika, that they make dua for the believers. And from this dua that they say, ربنا وسئت كل شيء رحمة وعلمة فاغفر للذين تابوا واتبعوا سبيلك وقهم عذاب الجحيم ربنا وسئت كل شيء you have encompassed everything with your knowledge and your mercy when the knowledge of Allah has reached everything هو بكل شيء عليم he is has knowledge of everything his knowledge has encompassed everything not just his knowledge also had mercy. Anywhere that you can imagine is the knowledge of Allah, then in that same place is the mercy of Allah. Rabbana wa sa'ta kulli shay'an. You have encompassed everything. Rahmatan wa ilman. How vast in your knowledge, how vast in your imagination is the knowledge of Allah? Very vast. Then know the mercy of Allah is just as vast as his knowledge. The malaika know this, so they make dua saying this and describing Allah by this. Rabbana, wasi'ta kulli shay'in. You have encompassed, encompassed everything with your mercy and your knowledge. Fagfir lil ladina tabu. Forgive those who have made tabu. Wa taba'u sabilaka and those who follow your way. Waqihim, waqihim, adab al jahim. And protect them from the hellfire. So before they made this dua, what did they do? Praise Allah. By something that we would have no idea of except that we see it here in the book of Allah. That the mercy of Allah is just as vast as his ilm. We would never have any idea how many people have the spirit of the mercy of Allah. And if you ask somebody the spirit of the mercy of Allah, is Allah all known? Say, yeah, Allah knows everything. Then where are you going to find the knowledge of Allah? On the find the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, it's not a suitable ever that a Muslim despair of the mercy of Allah. As long as he believes in that Allah, he's, he's, ever, he's knowledgeable of everything. He's the know of the unseen. As the mubarak and exaggeration, then he knows the unseen. No. But everywhere that his knowledge is, his rahmah is there also. Uh -huh. So with that, when they made dua, they said, Rabbana, O oh Allah, wa sa'ta kulli shayin. You have encompassed everything. Rahmatan, and with your mercy, wa ilman, with your knowledge, faghfir lil ladina tabu. These people that you know that they have fallen to sin, your knowledge has reached them, so also, inshallah, have your mercy reach them. فَاغْفِرْ لِلَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَاتَّبَعُوا سَبِيلَكَ And they follow your way. وَقِهِمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ And protect them from the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid us in our religion and to forgive us and to protect us. إِنَّهُ وَلِيُّ ذَلِكَ وَالْقَادِرْ عَلَيْهِ وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَى نَبِيَّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَمْ Naam. No. Mm -hmm. Have it if you Those who continue upon their their disobedience to Allah. No. Alhamdulillah, there's no questions here in the um, online. Inshallah, we'll stop here.
سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت